The Mario vs. Donkey Kong remake just dropped, and it looks like a lot of fun. As someone who hasn't messed with the series much but does enjoy puzzle platformers, I'll probably end up picking it up in due time. But, this release, in a vacuum, isn't what has me so excited. Because to me, this game isn't a random, standalone schedule filler, but the result of a shifting direction for one of Nintendo's greatest icons. Donkey Kong is a series you'd think would get more respect than it has in recent years. I mean, it's not like Nintendo's never let legacy IPs fall off in the past, but this is Donkey Kong we're talking about. Their first true gaming success, Shigeru Miyamoto's baby! As of earlier this month, Tropical Freeze turned 10 years old, marking a decade since the Ape's last mainline release, which is crazy. However, I think there is hope. Not only do I firmly believe that a new Donkey Kong game will be upon us in the near future, but it won't just be that. We're about to live through a complete Donkey Kong resurgence, one that, if executed properly, could have DK once again taking his rightful place on the main Nintendo IP throne. <laughs> Let me explain. Now, to understand Donkey Kong's potential revival, we gotta understand his downfall. I think a brief history lesson is in order. Back in the 90s, Nintendo was looking to revitalize the Donkey Kong IP, which was going completely unused at the time. This eventually landed in the hands of Rareware, who would go on to develop Peak. The Donkey Kong Country games are some of the best 2D platformers ever made, even through a modern lens. My hot take has always been that as good as this era was for Mario, Donkey Kong was the one who truly mastered the SNES. Rare had such an incredible innate understanding of the character, even giving him a complete redesign to fit their needs, and produced a game both physically and aesthetically unlike anything else at the time. Good things can't last. In an industry-shaking move, Microsoft purchased Rare in 2002, putting their collaborations with Nintendo to an end, minus some Game Boy re-releases. Donkey Kong flopped around aimlessly in the following period, shooting for some fun bongo-based gameplay but never amounting to the creativity and charm that Rare imbued the franchise with in the decade prior. DK needed a new home, desperately. And thankfully, he found one. Retro Studios, known for the chilling, atmospheric Metroid Prime series, would now be graduating to something truly important. Monkey Game. But this wasn't any monkey game, no no no. This was a true return to Donkey Kong. You'll never guess what they called it. Donkey Kong Country Returns was great, a lot of fun, but who cares about that? We got Tropical Freeze four years later. This was a masterpiece of a 2D platformer. It feels like Retro truly understood everything that made DK unique two decades ago and ramped it up tenfold. The aesthetic and immersion is unmatched. No platform exists without reason. Everything has a place in the world. Donkey Kong has this weight to his movement that feels unique but doesn't sacrifice overall mobility and momentum, making this one of the best playing platformers ever made. And the music, oh the music, bro. They brought back the man behind Sticker Brush Symphony and Aquatic Ambience. Of course he was gonna cook. People might have been hard on this game at the time, but today, everyone can agree that Tropical Freeze is one of the best 2D platformers ever conceived. All of this greatness into nothing. Yeah, Retro Studios had their hands full with something, probably, and with them now fully dedicated to Metro Prime 4, Donkey Kong is once again on the streets, as he has been for a decade now. But I think that time has come to an end, because Nintendo is clearly building towards something big. A very deliberate effort to rebuild Donkey Kong's popularity has been going down over the last year or so, the first evidence of which can be found in the Super Mario Bros. movie. Now, it isn't just Donkey Kong's presence in the movie that points to this, obviously there are a bunch of characters involved, it's his significance. A sizable portion of the movie focuses exclusively on the journey to the Kong Kingdom because of how imperative their support would be in stopping Bowser. And once we get there, DK is immediately added to the main cast, contributing more to the movie than even Luigi. His rivalry with Mario is a main focus of the latter half of the film, alongside parallels between the two as they journey to rescue their respective family members. I can't stress enough just how important it is that Donkey Kong played a key role in this movie. This was the second highest grossing film of 2023. Children and families across the world who might not be keeping up with a franchise on a decade long hiatus now have Donkey Kong on the mind. And it doesn't end there, because guess who got an entire series of Lego sets all to themselves? None other than the top banana himself. Sure, you could argue that it's solely because of his connection to Mario, but even considering that, the fact that this was done before other big series like Animal Crossing were, and before franchises like Zelda have even been announced, goes to show how dedicated Nintendo is to expanding the Donkey Kong brand. LEGO is enormous, and having DK be one of your first picks to adapt shows commitment to the IP. 
But as convincing as both of these facts are, neither corroborates my point as well as the most crucial piece of evidence does, Super Nintendo World. Ever since its announcement, one of the primary pieces of criticism directed towards this theme park was the fact that it was essentially Super Mario World. There are a few nods to other IPs here and there, like the secret Pikmin hidden throughout the park, but this is largely a 3D Mario experience. To your house? In 3D land? But that won't be the case for much longer. Because again, before Zelda, before Splatoon, before Animal Crossing, Donkey Kong is coming. In an expansion near equal in size to the Mario portion of the park, Super Nintendo World's Donkey Kong Country is opening in Japan this year, with America getting it in 2025. This is huge. Of all of Nintendo's monkey-related ventures thus far, I'd say this is the most important. Yes, like with LEGO, you can argue this is solely to make the park feel seamless, since Mario and Donkey Kong have that inherent connection, but this is still a major investment. This isn't some tiny Funky Kong shop tucked away in a corner behind Princess Peach photo ops, this is a full-on second park. In the same way that the Mario portion was its own park, at the very least. Sure, it might not be the most expansive area in the world, but having it be comparable in size and ambition to Mario's section, and promoting them alongside each other in this manner, proves that Nintendo considers Donkey Kong a big enough name to find success in. Or, at the very least, they're dedicated to turning him into that. Keep in mind, in spite of them expanding to other entertainment markets, Nintendo is a video game company first and foremost. All of this stuff exists to promote all of this stuff. So why would Nintendo suddenly and intensely expand the Donkey Kong brand to this extent if they weren't building towards something big? No, I don't think Mario vs. Donkey Kong, a $50 GBA remake dropped in the last year of a system's life, is the extent of what they have planned for the ape. Personally, I'd be shocked if we don't see DK in the first year of the Switch 2. It makes too much sense. With Retro having their hands full, and Rare obviously unavailable, I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo decides to develop internally. But we did have that rumor recently about them potentially being more lenient in handing their IPs to third parties, so maybe someone completely new takes the reins. I'm not completely sure, but what I am sure of is that the Donkey Kong Renaissance is upon us. What a time to be alive. And if I'm wrong, let me be dubbed Chimp Chump for life. But as always, I'd love to hear what you think. Do you think Donkey Kong's future is bright? What additional Kong products could we see in the near future? And what form do you think the next mainline DK adventure could take? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you later.